stalking the top lieutenant now for weeks. The man is clearly on edge, waiting outside his house in the Highlander, making sure to move far enough from his house not to be noticed. Each night, I sit and wait, monitoring his actions and who comes in and out. Think about a cop doing a stakeout, except this one is for serial killers. He's been drinking for hours now. Cautiously, the large, burly, bearded man stumbles out of his front door. It's approximately eight at night. Oh, I just remembered. Tonight is his bar night. Starting his truck, he drives towards his favorite watering hole. Slowly, following behind, until he speeds up. Damn it, did I get made, I thought. The crazed man now running red lights and driving recklessly, running over mailboxes and hitting parked cars. The smash truck now, with a flat tire, finally comes to a stop. Injured, seeing the man slouched over his head against the steering wheel and blood pouring out of it. Glass scattered throughout the seats, a large gash in his neck. For a short time I leave the area and park my SUV down the street making sure to grab all my supplies. Now, back in his truck, I move the body over, pointing my gun at him and not saying a word. There he lies, still breathing as he stares at me while I'm driving. Where are you taking me? He says, while choking on blood pouring from his mouth. How about a late night swim? Striking the injured man over the back of the skull with a metal pipe. He faints, falling on the floorboard of the truck, now driving for 30 minutes into the night, finding the perfect place, now in a deserted area of the forest, carefully laying down the plastic wrap all over the bed of the truck, first grabbing the bone saw knife and begin cutting his limbs and torso, eventually cutting his head off from his body, putting each body part in separate trash bags and finally removing the plastic wrap with its own bag as well ensuring not to spill the blood anywhere. I walk around the lake nearby and pick up heavy rocks to weigh the bags down so they won't surface. Now, with each bag filled with rocks and body parts, I begin disposing of each one, about a quarter of a mile apart. Ultimately, deciding to dump the truck as well. Turning over the engine, pulling the gear shift into drive as it slowly moves forward into the murky waters, becomes less and less visible until it sinks into the depths. Now back to the kill site. I gather my supplies carefully, carefully putting them back in their specific spot in my tactical bag. Walking for a while, I see a main road. Stranded, I set up a lift driver to pick me up. Minutes pass as a silver Lexus approaches. Hello sir, nice car. I greet him with a smile. Sit anywhere you like. So, um, what brings you out here in the forest at this time of night? He asks. I was hiking, spending time with a friend, and he took the truck and left me out here. I explain while smiling. Wow, some friend, he exclaims. Yeah, he always was a prick. I don't think I'll be seeing him again anytime soon. We arrive back in the man's neighborhood. I tell the driver, right here is fine handing him a twenty. Wow, thanks a lot, he says excitedly. Have a good one. Closing the door, I make my way to my vehicle and relax. Taking out the phone I stole from the lieutenant, searching through the man's contact list in the phone, I compare names with the list Dad gave me. I discover most of the names match up. Looking to the sky, a man. A good friend of mine owns a restaurant on the other side of town. I'll talk to him, see if I can use his place when it's closed on Sunday. I'll phone him up, we meet up the next day. Asking him for a favor, he inquires. What do you need it for? Jordan's a childhood friend who I trust with my life. I start to explain where I've been and what I've been up to. I'm expecting him to be horrified. He laughs. You're not serious, man. Come on. So, basically anyone you think is evil? 
Don't you think that's a little bit weird? Maybe a bit psycho? Staring at him seriously. You know what I think is psycho, Jordan. You have decent men with loving families coming home from work every day watching the news. You know what they see? Rapists. Murderers. Child molesters all getting out of prison. Mafioso is getting caught with 20 kilos. Walking out on bail the same day. Little girls playing in their yard catching stray bullets. Everywhere. Everyone's thinking the same thing. Someone should just go kill those motherfuckers. Kill them all. Come on, admit it. Even you have thought about it. Jordan begins pondering. Taking in everything he's just heard. Uh, this is some heavy shit, man. There's so much that just pisses me off. <laughs> you should recruit. I'm sick and tired of walking down the street fearing for my life. Waiting for one of the crack-piping, ass-wipe, motherless lowlifes to get me. I mean, you're not just talking about mob guys. You want to take out pimps, drug dealers, all that shit, right? Damn, man. You could do this every freaking day. Okay. Count me in. He shouts. <laughs> not quite yet, Jordan. First, I need to see what you can do. Grab a few of your guns. Buy some paper targets and binoculars. We'll meet up tomorrow. It's the next day. Gathering all my supplies and weapons. I start heading towards the isolated part of the woods for Jordan's training. Hey, man. He shouts from a distance. I walk over to him and direct Jordan to set up the targets at intervals of 20 feet apart. Remembering to adjust the rifles for temperature change, wind resistance and spin drift. The guns lay apart a few feet from one another, on a silk cloth, in order from left to right. Nosla M48 Patriot hunting rifle with 6.5mm caliber rounds. Remington 550 pump action 12 gauge shotgun. A slightly modified AR-15 assault rifle using 556 NATO with 30 round banana magazines. My custom Beretta 9mm. And last. A Remington 700 bolt action sniper rifle. <sighs> Take your pick, Jordan. He begins looking over each weapon while lifting them, gripping the handles and testing the sights. <laughs> Let's start small, he says excitedly. Jordan picks up the 9mm, begins loading rounds into the magazine. Loud shots ring out, echoing into the woods. I'm holding the binoculars, working as his spotter. Jordan shoots at the first target, 20 feet away. Shell casings cover our feet, bullets tearing into the target. He completes his first trial, remembering to disengage the slide with the safety on. We walk to the next target, to assess his accuracy. Proudly smiling, he looks at me. <laughs> Not bad, eh? Impressed, I utter. Good. Now let's move up the ranks. Here, take this one. Handing him the hunting rifle. Once more he loads up the weapon, standing with a stern stance, his grip tight and sights locked onto the furthest target. Bang. Miss. <laughs> Adjust for wind, compensation 10 degrees, I say. Several more shots fired. Hit. Good contact. Jordan cheers. A few more hours of training pass. Hmm, excellent training day. We'll continue tomorrow. You're a natural. Scooping up every gun, we load up our supplies and head out for a few cold ones. After a night of drinking and talking shit to some pretty ladies, we call it quits. Now, at home, with a good buzz. Happy and... Worried all at the same time, wondering about the dangers of having a new partner. Weighing my options, eventually coming to the conclusion, I made the right decision. Feeling as if this is a calling from a higher power, we are the angels of death, called upon to rid this world of evil. We will stop at nothing. The time is now. Let the games begin.
Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>